Hey everyone, welcome back to the Triad Chord Scale series. I'm John Michael Swift, and today I'm going to teach you a little finger picking version of the Bird Song intro by Florence and the Machine. A little bit of an obscure little bit of Florence and the Machine music, but God, I just I, this is one of my favorite little doodads they have on any of their albums. And it's a neat little way to see how to use triads on the guitar. Um, so the basic idea is that we've got a triad we're kind of fixed on. It's essentially built around this F sharp minor chord. You get your ring finger on the 11th fret of the G string, the middle finger on the 10th fret of the B string, and the pointer finger on the 9th fret of the E string. So you get a little diagonal line going on here. See if you can get that first of all. And you start out with this real little, just kind of, I, I, it's kind of like a backwards 3-3-2 three, three, to me. And I go, I go, I really kind of think it is like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So you go third, third, second, third, third, second, third, second, in terms of strings you pick. I use the thumb and the pointer. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So that three, three, two group, you kind of hit the, the B string on the last note of each little foot that you have there. So that's the first part. And then what I usually do is start throwing in this C sharp, but also this E right here. It's pretty easy to reach the 12th fret of the E string, so you go. So I, there I just kind of do ascending like triplet pick. I go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And a specific way you can do it, you can go the C, the E, the C. And sometimes I'll kind of also throw in the B there, the 12th fret of the B string. And again, this is a pretty easy thing to do. You just kind of use this pinky to add these other color notes in there. So it's kind of notes around the triad. Really easy way to do it with finger picking. So I'm going C, B, C. So once you kind of got some sort of intro thing there, again, they use some stereo mixing techniques. I'm not exactly sure how it was played on the record, but I kind of just like let some picking happen there. Just kind of twist a few things up. Um, and once you get a little further into the riff, you start to hear the harp. The harp plays something very specific. So I'm going to show you what that is. It goes... Na, 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 na. So you still have these two fingers here, but you're going to use the pointer finger kind of alternates on the G string between 11 and 9. So you go... Na, 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 na. I'm going... Third, second, third. Third, second, third, second. It was 11, 10, 11. 9, 10, 11, 10. Kind of in terms of the frets. I'm, again, I'm kind of crossing the strings. So watch real closely if you can get this. I really recommend going over that really, really slowly. Use a little YouTube settings to slow it down so you can get a sense of that. That's the first most important part. Once you got that, you do that twice, but the last note becomes the C sharp on the second time through. So it goes na 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 That becomes the last note right there. So once you kind of tag that C sharp, you start to go into the rest of the harp part. You go you go eleven, ten in the B, twelve on the E, nine in the E. See so if you can just get that melody down. So there's a bit of a twisty part after that. And then it goes 11 on the G, 10 on the B, and then 12 on the B. And it kind of almost follows that figure again, but ends up on the C sharp. 11 on the G, 12, 10 on the B, 9 on the E. So it goes... 
Na 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 na. It almost like it does these two notes, then does this note, then the same two notes again, and ends on that. And then it just tags on a little arpeggio. 12 on the E, 9 on the E, 10 on the B. So that whole last fragment goes. Na, 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 na. So let's start to go over all that again and start to weave it together. So you just kind of start with this kind of 3-3-2. Three, three, you start to tag the notes on the E string. Maybe add the B in. And the hard part is Na 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 and a note that goes And then it just kind of repeats that again and again and again and again and again. Um, of course, there's all kinds of loops in the original recording going under it. There's drum loops, there's bass stuff going on. Um, and there's this really kind of cool funky chord progression, which is almost just like a, a two, three, four, that just kind of suspended in the key of A. It never really goes to A. It's kind of weird. It's like it's F sharp minor or A, but it never really goes to the tonic ever, which is kind of neat. Um, anyway, it's a it, it's a riff I really really like, and it's really neat how you can see around this F sharp minor. So many little things happen. Your hands don't really have to move a lot, but you get a lot of color out of the melody with how you play with this. So I really encourage you to try to find any triad anywhere. See if you can do something similar. Try to come up with your own idea, but that uses some of the same principles so that you, you can kind of start to develop your own style, your own techniques, your own riffs. Really handy way to work on stuff and to get yourself to do more musical things with all the triads. Um, yeah, that'll about do it for this for now. If you find this series helpful, check out more of the riffs, check out more of the scale, see if you can get the master exercise down. Really, really opens up your musicality. Bunches and bunches and bunches. All right, that's all from me for now. Have a good one.